Hey everyone, this will be a quick video about mods and assets in CD Skylines. Specifically, what I need to do to use different groups of assets and mods for Aurelia and Altengrad, which are my two cities and series that I built in parallel. So if you are in a similar situation and want to switch between multiple sets because you want to build multiple cities with different styles, then this could be a tutorial for you. This is probably not the only way to do it, but it works for me and it's quite easy. Why would you want to have certain assets enabled for one map and disabled for another? For example, I don't want to have uh, futuristic high-tech skyscrapers for my historical Central European city. So I want to have all the assets and mods I don't need disabled for it. It saves memory, first and foremost. It shortens the loading time, it makes crashes less probable, I guess, and it improves FPS slightly. So in the main menu, you can obviously go to the content manager and disable or enable certain assets, mods, styles, whatever. The information about which asset is disabled or enabled is stored in a file called usergamestate.cgs. This file is, in Windows at least, located in Users, Your Name, App Data, Local, Colossal Order, City Skylines. I don't know where it is on Mac, just Google it. Maybe you will not have all these other files or folders in here, because most are mod related, it doesn't really matter. Technically, I think that this file stores the information about disabled content. That's why the file is larger if you disable a lot of stuff. Uh, that will be important later. Anyway, if you want to prepare a set of items that you want to use for a certain save or city, then you just go to the content manager and browse it and disable, only disable, don't unsub, the items that you don't want for it. After you are done, the user game state file should be updated in real time as you are disabling stuff. But it might be safer to just shut down the game. Now you want to copy the user game state into some different folder, which will be named after your save or a city. That's at least what I do. Don't rename the file itself, obviously. Uh, repeat this process for other saves and cities. Now, every time you want to play city A, you are going to copy the user game state from folder A into the city skylines folder and start the game. After you are done with playing city A and you want to play city B, then you go to folder B and copy its user game state into the City Skylines folder and play the game. Now, maybe some problems that you might encounter. Sometimes, really sometimes, when I'm disabling a lot of stuff in the content manager in the main menu, the game becomes laggy and maybe even crashes. This might delete the user game state completely, or maybe it just messes it up in a way that if you start the game again, every single item will be disabled maybe, you know, it kind of varies. But in any case, just delete the user game state and restart the game and uh, start over because the game on each start is going to update this file and if it's not there, it's just going to create new one. So you're gonna start over with disabling or enabling whatever you want. It's best practice, I think, to continuously back up the user game state as you are in the content manager and in the process of disabling stuff. After you create multiple copies of user game state, you can subscribe to new items in the Steam Workshop without worrying about anything. Because like I said, the user game state is uh, holding information about stuff that is disabled. So assets that are newly subscribed are automatically enabled and they will be enabled for all copies of the user game state by default. It doesn't really matter which user game state you're gonna copy into the game because if it doesn't have the information about that new asset, it's just going to have it enabled automatically for all of them. So that's kind of convenient actually. If you only want new stuff for specific saves, then you need to disable those assets before playing the save where you don't want them. And obviously you need to update your backed up user game state file with the one that was newly created. Mods are exactly the opposite because they are disabled by default. So if you sub to a new mod, you need to enable it before playing the save where you want it. And again, back up the newly created user game state. It sounds complicated, but if you think about it for a while and just practice it, then it's quite simple. So that's it. Now I will go over some things that are related to specific mods, which might have some settings that you might want to switch between different saves. 
I will start with the loading screen mode, the LSM. Not sure if people know about this feature, but the LSM can actually not load certain vanilla assets that you choose. A complete guide on how to do this is written in the description of the LSM in the workshop, so definitely go read that. Long story short, you can make, with the help of a web page linked in the LSM description, a text file, basically a list of stuff that the LSM skips while loading the save. So for example, for the futuristic Aurelia series, I skip all the European row houses and the nautical marker, for example, because I don't like to have it on my ferry lines in the river. Now, for the Altengrad city, which is a historical European city, I have a separate text file, different one. Here I skip all the vanilla row houses, again, because I don't really like them, and lots and lots of props, like hedgerows, antennas, shop signs, tram stop signs, and so on. Again, structure of this file is thoroughly described in the LSM description. So after changing the user game state and starting the game, I go to the content manager, the LSM settings, and write the path to the text file right here. And obviously check this marker in here as well. In my case, I just change this part over here because the rest of the path is the same for both of my files. Now you're just going to load into the safe that you want to play and hopefully the game won't crash. When you are in, you probably want to have different themes, color corrections and so on between different saves. So for this, I use the Theme Mixer 2 mod, which allows you to save theme settings and call them up later. The TM2 saves the loot info as well, but for some reason it doesn't change it properly when I, when I do the switch. So after applying the TM2 switch, I also go to the ultimate eye candy mod, apply some you know completely different save in there, and then the save I want. For some reason that works and the switch is now complete with all the graphics. Of course, this is not needed if you don't use uh, theme mixing at all, but only use the complete themes, you know, right from the workshop. And uh, those are saved with the map save, so you don't really need to do that, but maybe you want to switch the loots, so ultimate eye candy is needed. Another thing I need to do is switch the cube map. So I go to the cube map replacer settings and change the cube map I want. It kind of takes a while before it applies it. Anyway, there is no custom save feature here, so you need to remember the name of the cube map that you have for that specific save. I'm not sure if other mods also don't remember the settings based on the map. In other words, if they save their settings in the save file or not, but I simply don't touch other settings because it's just way too complicated and unnecessary. Especially switching the Daylight Classic just messes everything up. So set it once after you get the mod first time and forget about it. Just like the Relight settings, post process FX if you have that or so on. So the checklist for me switching between cities is like this. Copy in the user game state, start the game, change the loading screen mod file path, load the save, Change Theme Mixer 2, Ultimate Eye Candy, Cube Map, and it's done. It's actually quite simple and uh, it's really fast to do it like this. If I notice that in the game I have some assets or mods that I don't need, maybe I downloaded something new and forgot to disable it for this particular save, I just take a piece of paper and make a note of it. And next time I'm going to load this save, uh, before I do it, I'm going to disable these things and obviously update the user game state in that backup folder. And that's it. That is the switching method that I used. Maybe it's going to be helpful to you as well. Maybe you are in a similar situation. You can even create a user game state with almost everything disabled if you want to play vanilla or near vanilla experience. Anyway, guys, if this video was helpful to you, feel free to share it, like it, subscribe to the channel, and I'll see you next time.